Hey, what's up, you guys, and welcome back to the Televised Podcast. My name is Anna, and happy Saturday. I decided to change, <laughs> change days again, but I tried to do Friday for as long as I could, but I just couldn't do it anymore. I've got school stuff. It's just more convenient on Saturday, so be sure to look forward to the episodes coming every single Saturday up until the end of Supergirl season, so for the next, what, like, still two months, I guess? Um... But yeah, so Saturdays it is. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Supergirl season 6 episode 11 titled Mixie in the Middle. I this <laughs> this episode was a lot. It was a lot, you know. Um <laughs> It was something. I think, you know what? I mean, <laughs> I think if anything this episode almost felt like it jumped the shark, which is so crazy because how can you possibly jump the shark on a show about a woman who is bulletproof and flies around and is an alien? But it felt like it did just just because it did. <laughs> it was just madness. But I mean, it lended itself really well to Mixie and to, you know, this, this story that they're telling about um, Lena specifically as well. So... I don't know. It was really interesting. It, it, But it does feel like specifically a turning point in the show because this episode really kind of established that Mixie is not a character that Kara can beat in the traditional way that she uh, has beaten other villains, you know? And, and that's what Jump the Shark really even means. It's that it's like it's a significant turning point in a series where not necessarily that things get like ridiculous, but just that it's it's a turning point of uh, what we know. It's a departure from what we know of the series to what we can expect going forward. And this episode really kind of feels like that um, in a way, which is odd because we're halfway through their final season, but um, it's still going to be really interesting to watch. So let's talk about the episode, though. I will obviously keep kind of dissecting it as we go. Um, so we pick right up where the episode left off with Kara calling Mixie to come help her. We find out that Kara and Nixley both summoned him because apparently like fifth dimensional imps and fifth dimensional beings can sense each other's magic, kind of like a home honing beacon. Um, and we also find out that Mixie was the one who testified at Nixley's trial against her, which eventually is what got her banished to the Phantom Zone. And, uh, Nixley hits Mixie with a crystal thing whatever, but Kara is able to fly them away quickly once Mixie, f Mixie, god damn it, this is gonna be so hard, Mixie and Nixley is gonna be really awful this whole entire episode, I apologize in advance, <laughs> um, once Mixie frees her from the magic ice, um, and I, listen, just like a little, like, sound thing, like a nerdy sound thing, Mixie's theme, like his little character theme that plays whenever he's around, is so wonderful. It's delightful. I love this theme that they've created for him. It's so nice. <laughs> it's just really fun. Like, if you just listen to the music when he's around, it's just really wonderful. Speaking of music, so at the tower, the super friends discuss Nixley, and Kara says, I know I should have told you guys, but I didn't think I'd ever see her again. <laughs> Which is saying what I have been saying since everybody was like, why didn't Kara tell any of them about Nixley? Hello, she thought she was dead. And she never thought she'd see her again. Like, hello. <laughs> it just answers all of those questions. Anyway, though, so Mixie says that Nixley's escape from the Phantom Zone was inev inevitable. And then he breaks into song? <laughs> Which again is like, oh my god, guys, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? So, it's a spoof of Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive, and it's got a lot of imp lore in it, so I'm just going to break it down because it just, it's a lot, and it's a lot to process when you're watching, because the first time I watched it, I didn't, I'm like, I didn't get any of that. I was too busy looking at Mixie, being in shock that he was singing I Will Survive, <laughs> looking at Alex's reaction, looking at Kara's reaction because they were all so funny. You could see at one point that Melissa is literally trying so hard not to laugh. It's wonderful. But so basically, 
We finally get the truth about Nixley's life, discovering that Nixley's dad is slash was the evil imp king, and she worked with her brother to take him down, but she was caught and punished while her brother was, like, praised. Like, she was the one who was punished for her insolence, whereas her brother was kind of, like, rewarded for his ambition, it seems. Um... And Mixie says that Nixley found some kind of all stone, which was created by some imp named Jared. Of course, spelled in a very obnoxious way, uh, but it's still funny that his name is just Jared. Um, which would give him mastery over, like, everything. Matter, magic, energy, everything. Like, this this stone, it, it as it implies, it's an all stone, so you get power over everything. So the Allstone got destroyed and scattered uh, throughout the space and time, I don't know, <laughs> where they became the totems. These pieces became totems of truth, destiny, love, dreams, hope, humanity, and courage. Every planet has a set, I guess, and she needs the totems to rebuild the Allstone, but they could be disguised as anything, so she needs this magic orb to find them, but only apparently the blood of Jared can power it, so she wants to put Mixie, who is the last living descendant of Jared, um, in the orb to power it so she can find the Allstone pieces. Also, when I was first watching this episode, I was like, um, you mean the Paragons? Like, I, like, that was my first connection was, like, the Paragon of Courage, the Paragon of Hope, the Paragon of Humanity, the Paragon of whatever. And it, it feels kind of like that, but it, I think it's, they're not gonna bring, I don't think they're gonna bring a, a crisis, um, uh, reference in here. I don't think we're getting any of the other characters that were Paragons in this final season. I think that it's gonna specifically be, there's one for every member of the Super Friends. I'm gonna make my guesses. Obviously, Dreams is Nia. Like, no shit. They're done. <laughs> then we have uh, Hope, who I would assume is Kara. Kara is probably the, the totem of Hope. Um, let's see. Maybe Love is Kelly. Kelly could be Love. Um, or Kelly could be Truth. But I think maybe Jean is Truth, just because, I don't know, he seems like a very truthful guy. Um... I think maybe Lena is destiny uh, because of her, you know, newfound destiny that we saw her take up in this episode. Um, probably Brainy is courage, I would guess. Maybe. Um, <laughs> or maybe he's... But I can't... He can't be humanity, right? Like... <laughs> oh, duh. Alex is humanity. Hello. <laughs> So here's my guesses. Here's my guesses. Okay. Okay. Final, final guess. Truth is Jean. Destiny is Lena. Love is Kelly. Dreams is Nia. Hope is Kara. Humanity is Alex. And courage is Brainy. Ta-da. We'll see if I'm right. <laughs> so on the tower balcony, we hear a phone ring off screen and Alex says, now's, got a, now's not a good time. Um, and this pointed inclusion makes me think that the next episode runs concurrently with this one, at least for a little bit, because we can all assume that it's Kelly on the other line because she's absent in this episode, but obviously she is absent, uh, in a real life reason because Kelly, uh, excuse me, Ozzy was in the writer's room for the, for this episode. She was finalizing her script during this episode, so obviously <laughs> she was not going to be in it, but I also assume that because... This episode perhaps runs concurrently to make a point uh, in the next episode. Um, who is, she's most likely, Kelly, is busy, uh, like, you know, calling Alex for help in this Ormfell situation, but Alex says the other super friends are too busy, and she takes the Silver Guardian helmet and goes to help, where she probably eventually will meet John Diggle, and he'll help her. And then probably, like, midway through the episode, or at least, like, the within the first two acts of the episode is where it'll meet up to present day and we'll get Golden Guardian and we'll get Kelly, you know, uh, talking to the super friends and being like, hey, you need to help me with this. Like, I know that you're busy running around fighting cats in the middle of National City, but I need your help and these people need your help and they all look like me and, and this is what needs to happen. I need to not deal with your apathy right now. And it's going to be really interesting to watch just because... <sighs> I am so excited to see what Ozzy 
brings to this episode and brings to Kelly and brings to the show and brings to John Diggle and 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 Alex and Kara and how she because it's so unique and interesting to have an actor be the one behind all of these characters and it's going to be so interesting to look at her versions of all of these characters and see her see them through her eyes it's going to be so interesting and I'm so excited um and I'm just really thrilled and I like I said I think that the beginning of the next episode is really going to focus on Kelly being on the ground while the super friends are busy dealing with Nixley and whatever problems she's coming up with that we saw in this episode it's going to be Kelly dealing with the Ormfell instead on a human level dealing with the people who are affected by the building coming down around them because, I mean, maybe we can all assume that they had moved in. You know, did did they move in? I don't know. Uh, but in, And then I'm also going to assume that Joey's going to be a part of it. There's going to be, like, you know, multiple things going on. And I'm just really excited to see exactly what happens um, with Kelly's episode. And, and But, yeah, so that's my, my theory about the episode is that I think it's going to run concurrently just for a little bit and then we'll catch up to present day. And the story will keep moving forward. Anyway, on the tower balcony, Kara blames herself for all of this. She says that she feels like she is the one that let Nixley loose on the earth. And Brainy and Nia actually walk out onto the balcony at the same time. And Brainy says to Kara, that's not true. It's not like you co- consciously chose to bring an insane imp to terrorize the earth. And Nia's like, uh. <laughs> She's like, yeah, who would do such a thing? <laughs> So they make a plan to try to depower Nixley using the same method she used to power herself. So they're basically going to reverse engineer this, uh, the kryptonite, or not kryptonite, the, um, like, kryptonium power sucker that she used in the last episode. So in the dream world, Nia sees that the ravens have finally broken through the ice cage from the last episode and Mixie is dead inside. Brainy approaches Nia and asks if something is wrong and and she kind of brushes him off and she's like, you know, leave me alone. And Brainy says, we promised no more secrets or we swore no more secrets. And it's like, ah, ah, it's so good. They're so cute. I just, uh, they're the best couple. (laughs) They're the best head couple I know. Like, (laughs) they're so wonderful and it was just a really sweet moment and listen bookmark this tweet i i'm saying it now i think that in the coming episodes once lena comes back and she starts to kind of like work with her magic or whatever starts to feel it out i think at some point kara is going to say something similar to lena about her magic because lena maybe she feels self-conscious about the magic or she feels like she doesn't want to show anybody until she's figured it out or whatever but whatever the case may be i think she's probably going to just kind of like play it you know kind of close to the chest at least for a minute and then kara is gonna say hey we promised that we'd be open to each other why what are you keeping from me i just feel this parallel coming (laughs) So Nia then confesses to everything, but Brainy says that she shouldn't feel bad. He reminds her of when he worked with Lex and how the super friends helped defeat him, even when he didn't believe they could. He does tell her that she should tell Kara, but she says that Kara would lose all respect for her and asks to keep it between them for now. Um, And that's, again, I mean, I've talked about this before every single episode nearly this season. I love the relationships that the super friends have to Kara, and I love... Nia and Brainy specifically their their reverence for Kara and the way that they look up to her and I love that they included that line of her being like I don't want Kara to be disappointed in me I don't want her to think I'm a bad hero like that would be the worst thing if my idol supergirl told me that I was a bad hero you know I just I love that so in Newfoundland not Ireland but Newfoundland anyway Lena is riding in a car when she gets a phone call from Andrea. She asks how the trip is going, and Lena thanks her for letting her use the Catco jet, and then they show the worst (laughs) image I have ever seen. (laughs) It's Katie McGraw in a horrible, dry as all hell, red wig as her own mother. 
they really dug themselves into a hole with that one when they did that in like what season five when they first showed Katie McGraw playing her own mother it was like oh god like just get Lynn Rene from I probably didn't say that right get Lynn from Motherland Fort Salem she looks just like Katie McGraw like let's get her on this shit instead of putting Katie McGraw in a party city it wig like come on now <laughs> And they make all of us look at her for so long in this episode. It's literally horrible. But anyway, this is just the first instance of it. Uh, but anyway, apparently Lena's mom was friends with these women named Florence and Margaret. So she's, speak so she's seeking out to them for info. Um, and <laughs> Andrea even says, you're her spitting image. No. <laughs> you know that Katie was like, this is too much. <laughs> So Lena asks Andrea if she can look into Florence, who she can't seem to locate. When Lena arrives at the end, she gets the warmest welcome until she mentions her mother's name, Elizabeth Walsh. She swiftly gets booted from the inn and sets off without an explanation why. And the lady even whispers, she's a dirty witch. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Which Lena has come to fruition. It's, it's wonderful. But, um... <laughs> One interesting thing about this episode is that they really try to go for the they really try to go for the idea that Lena comes from evil as well from her mother's side like they really try to set that up for for a part of this episode and it's really annoying because I know and I knew in my heart when I was watching it that they were not gonna retcon that Lena came from light while Lex came from darkness like they they weren't gonna ri get rid of that they were not so there's a lot of like song and dance in this episode about <sighs> Lena's mom is so evil and terrible and Lena thinks that her mom is the worst and it's like come on queen let's move past it like <laughs> anyway though so back at the tower Alex proposes that they're they like try to re-rig a power dampener cuff into a vice a device that Nick Nixley can't unlock I can't talk today the only trouble is that they'll need a constant magical power source, and they really don't know where to get that from, especially because Mixie can't use his magic lest he tip off Nixley exactly where they are. And so then Mixie brings out the Phantom Zone projector, and Alex jumps in, in front of Kara, like, so quick. Kara flinches like mad. It was so insane. My poor baby girl. <laughs> And they make it clear that that is not the option that they want to use at all, ever, and that no one should touch that thing ever again. They shoot that idea down real quick. Um, so Kara says that she wants to actually, like, reach Nixley to try and, like, reason with her, and she can only do that if she doesn't have powers. So to power this amulet, they need, or excuse me, to power the bracelet, they need an amulet, um, which apparently was from the worst episode that Supergirl ever aired. It was from the original Mixie episode, and it was apparently what Mono used to try and, like, take out Mixie, but it, whatever. Anyway, so apparently he didn't destroy it, he just hit it, so Kara had to go find it in Corto Maltas. And Kara, as she's flying out, she says, we can save everyone. With Nixley, we see that she goes back to Mitch's ship and he shows up after just breaking her out of, or excuse me, after just breaking himself out of jail. Um, she proves that apparently using magic isn't a big deal because, <laughs> well, they know where she is, right? Like, yeah. And, but she threatens Mitch's life. Big deal. <laughs> At the tower, Alex struggles to work with the amulet and Mixie offers to help. Um, and she says, tell me if Kelly calls again. She's been dealing with all the fallout. And again, that's another, I think, hint for all of us to put the piece together and realize that the next episode, at least part of it, is going to be concurrent uh, with this one. Anyway, so Jean and Alex try to get him out of their hair before he can bother them too much as he fumbles through trying to, like, help them. And then they pawn him off to Brainy and Nia. Oh, man. <laughs> So back with Lena, she enters a local tavern looking for answers after being booted from the inn. She speaks with the bartender who's named Peggy, but she apparently is also named Margaret. She's Margaret Jr. <laughs> and she's the same actress that's in all of the pictures. <laughs> so they made all of these actresses play their own mothers. So at least, hey, it wasn't just Katie, but still. 
And so the minute that she mentions her mom's name, Elizabeth Walsh, she basically gets, like, spat at, basically. Like, it, it was bad. She tells Lena that she needs to just get the hell out of Fortune Bay and that her mom basically is responsible for killing Margaret, her mother, Margaret Sr. <laughs> Lena says that that's impossible. Her mother was kind and gentle, but Peggy tells her that she was cunning and opportunistic and that she married Lionel to give her a new life and leave the town and her friend to wither away. And then they keep making me look at that picture. And Peggy tells her that their mothers were all in a coven and Lena's like, what? <laughs> and the lady says that she's seen her running arm in arm with a bulletproof alien. Hello, Supercorp Endgame. But she doesn't believe in magic? Like, come on, queen. You see this woman, like, fly around the city every day. Like, come on now. Lena says that she believes what she can see. And she says that, uh, I need more information about my mother right now. And, and she gives it to her. She says that Elizabeth lit a shed on fire without a single match, burning her father alive. And Peggy throws Lena's Luther jeans in her face and Lena eventually leaves. It was a really, like, it was a really sad moment, I think, for Lena. Because, like I said, they, they had established before from Lex that Lena came from light. She was always going to stand in the light while the Luthers stood in the darkness. And for Lena, this is like the rug being pulled under her, pulled out from under her of like, man, my, I was living with this idea that my mom was some wonderful person, but now I know that she was just as horrible as the Luthers. Like, what does that make me? Especially because earlier in the season, you know, she separated herself from the Luthers and finally was able to remove herself from the family and basically, like, say, I'm going to be my own person now. I don't care about Lu the Luthers or what you all do or whatever, you know? And I just, it's really upsetting to watch her kind of go through that. So at the tower, Brainy and Nia struggle to modify the cuff when Mixie comes up to bother them. They send him to start to organize the science lab instead. <laughs> But then Jean gets a message from Kara that she found a fifth dimensional energy spikes downtown while she was at the fortress. I don't know why she was at the fortress. They don't really talk about that. But anyway, so all the super friends are called out to help. And it's a gigantic cat in the middle of National City. <laughs> and this is the moment again where I think that all of us were like, literally, what the hell is going on? What is going on in this episode? What is going on in here on this day? Like, <laughs> and it was just so, again, like very jump the shark, very like literally what is happening, but that's magic for you. And, and I guess it's just hard to swallow because this is a superhero show and we've never really, we've only ever dealt with magic in season three with the like Kryptonian magic people, you know? But we didn't really deal with magic a whole lot then because it was mostly Rain who was, you know, super powered by the sun. So it's like, you know, or whatever. Uh, uh, she was just like a, you know what I mean? Anyway, so we didn't really deal with a lot of magic, but now it's like magic all the time. And it's, oh God, what has the show turned into? <laughs> all of a sudden, every show I watch is a witch show. Even if it's not a witch show, it's a, it's a witch show. <laughs> and so Alex then turns her what is that thing called it's like right hand of the soldier or something like that her little bracelet she turns it into a bazooka and then Kara tries to freeze breath this cat but it sneezes and it blows them all down the street so Brainy says that the fifth dimensional beings uh, possess unparalleled strength here so Nia plots to pull it into the dream realm with her but Brainy says that she could get stuck there she makes a dream uh, energy lasso, but Brainy knows that this whole thing's not going to work. Nia's like two inches from getting stuck in the dream realm. And Kara flies up and uses her heat vision like a giant laser to distract the cat while Brainy uses his bottle to bottle the cat like a planet. Which, I mean, for me, this moment is really upsetting because I hate that Brainy had to use it. <laughs> he keeps having to use these bottles and I hate that he has to because it's like... So it's such a sore spot for him, you know, and he even says like, I'm doing what my mom taught me, doing what my mother taught me. Like that is so upsetting, like because he's done everything to fight against being what his parents were and what his, his race is known for. 
and now he has to use it sometimes, you know? So that was a really upsetting moment to me, but... So then Nixley shows up on the scene and uses her magic to choke Kara from the inside, which was horrifying. She says that they have basically two hours to bring Mixie to the park or more chaos will reign. Back in Newfound Ireland, Lena gets another call from Andrea, letting her know that Florence Abbott was the woman she was looking for. And I'm like, didn't we already know that? Like, she kind of said her name like, like it was um, breaking news, but it wasn't. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And that she disappeared in conjunction with the murder of Margaret's husband years ago. Lena says, thanks for the info, but I'm heading home and that the trip was a mistake. Andrea presses Lena that the unknown is always scarier than the truth and that she can't deal with the past until she faces it. Lena is basically slightly convinced and decides to stay. Um, and this moment, these moments with Lena and Andrea... A lot of people had a lot of issues with them, like saying that maybe it should have been Kara... But for me, the thing is that both times, Andrea calls Lena. Like, it's not like Lena is calling Andrea and reaching out or whatever. Andrea is calling Lena <laughs> to check in on her. And, you know, she's the one who knew Lena when she was younger, even if they had the massive falling out. And she also knows a lot about her mother from what Lena told her when she was younger. So it's like, you know... I don't know. I can excuse it. I didn't mind it all that much. I mean, whatever. It, it was fine with me. <laughs> so at the tower, Brainy confronts Nia about her recklessness in trying to bring the cat into the dream realm. Nia says that it didn't matter as long as she fixed it, but Brainy says that nothing would be fixed if she died. So Nia and Kara pass around blame a little bit when Mixie comes out with a copy of himself. It doesn't work, though, and they have to think of something else. So Kara storms off for a moment alone and Nia follows. Nia says she can't let Kara blame herself for this anymore. And she finally comes clean to Kara. She tells her about how Nixley got trapped in the dream realm after escaping the Phantom Zone and how she didn't know who she was and so she made a deal with her. Her freedom for a day with her mom. Kara basically cuts her off from beating herself up by telling her that Nixley is a master manipulator and that Kara was manipulated by her too. And she said, Nia says, you don't hate me? And it's so sad. Like, like I said, you know, this relationship between Nia and Kara is just something that I find so interesting and the reverence that Nia holds for Kara and the fact that they are simultaneously friends, but also Nia sees Kara as like this Id idyllic Id idol figure is so interesting and I love that she was like you don't hate me and Kara's like no and <laughs> we all make mistakes like of course this was a big mistake but you're aware of that and we can now all work together to fix it and that's it that's how it is and Nia says too bad I can't dream up a better Mixie clone and Kara says that she has an idea so with Lena, she somehow managed to find Florence's hovel and enters, only to find her communicating with a crow made of steam. <laughs> and then she turns around with the biggest shotgun I have ever seen. <laughs> but Florence apparently immediately recognize her, recognizes her as Elizabeth's daughter and says she's been waiting for her for a long time. She tells Lena that her mother comes to her in her dreams and has told her she's a scientist and has basically been watching over Lena this whole time. So Florence requests a drop of Lena's blood, and she hesitantly complies, and it shows them the past. And what it amounts to is probably the most cringe-worthy content Supergirl has ever produced. It was horrible. It was like an allergy commercial. It was like a bad student film. It was, it was everything bad in this world was this sequence. <laughs> and that's not even including the wig. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the gist of it all is that each of these women were like earth witches who drew power from nature and Elizabeth's spark of power was like super strong and eventually Margaret started showing up to their like coven meetings with like bruises and being all battered and they knew that it was her husband and the town was not going to believe that this guy was beating his wife because apparently he was like really popular in the town. And so they decide to take matters into their own hands. They goodbye Earl, this son of a bitch. <laughs> a 
like, and they say that they really only meant to scare him, but the magic got away from them, and they set the entire shed on fire. After that, the town turned on them all, hunting Florence, outcasting Margaret, while Elizabeth ran away uh, with Lionel to America to, like, have a better life, basically. And she basically tells Lena that the reason that she even was with Lionel is because he was so controlling and so, like, kind of nasty. Not nasty, but just, like, he was a powerful man that could keep an eye on her. She says she lived under his control because she no longer trusted herself. And she tells Lena that she's proud of the woman. Her mother is proud of the woman that she's become. And it's just, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot to take. (laughs) So basically, uh, long story short of it all, Lena's mom was like a charmed one. (laughs) She was a charmed one. If she grew up, if she existed in the motherland Fort Salem universe, she would go, she would be at Fort Salem. Like there's, she belongs in all of this witch lore. (laughs) It's like, does this really belong on this show? I mean, I know that John Constantine does magic, but that's legends. This is Supergirl. It Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Back at the tower, Brainy and Alex complete the power dampener cuff, and Kara and Neo walk in with a solution for how to get it on her. Kara re- requests Brainy's image inducer so that Nia can pretend to be Mixie to get closer to her, similar to Mixie's original idea. Green Brainy is so handsome. I love his little blonde hair. I love his green face. (laughs) The funny little green guy. I love him. Um, And I just love when we get to see him. Anyway, though. um, Also, the thing is (laughs) that it seems like the show for a second, like, forgot that Jean can, like, just shapeshift into anybody he wants. Like, they didn't need the image inducer for Jean to do that. But you hear a little, like, a little 80-yard line. You can tell that it was 80-yard, and they probably inserted it later because they were like, oh, shit, we forgot that Jean can fully, like, shapeshift into anybody he wants. He says, better her than me. (laughs) Which, I mean, like, I'm super into the idea of, like, Nia taking it upon herself to like Im- intim- to imitate uh, Mixie as best as she can and also to like try and do everything she can to fix the mess that she feels like she made. So it, for me, it didn't really make sense that Jean would be the one to do it, but it is just funny that they inserted that little line so that they're like, look, we didn't forget. He just didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so at the park, Kara and Mixie, quote unquote Mixie, like air quotes Mixie, arrive and Nixley greets them. Kara requests that Mixie, at least, be allowed to put himself in the crystal and Nixley agrees. But as quote-unquote Mixie walks closer to the orb, the image inducer begins to glitch, eventually revealing that it's just Nia. Uh Uh-oh. Um, so at the tower, Alex, Jean, and Brainy grab the Phantom Zone projector and rush off, which leaves Mixie behind, uh, the real Mixie. (laughs) Nixley says that they've made her angry. Big mistake. Kara tries to intervene and the super friends immediate jump to brute force, but before they can even fight, Nixley has them tied up to these weird things in the middle of the park and she summons a kryptonite dragon in order to make Mixie come to her. So Nixley reaches out to Mixie and says that 300 years ago he swore he was on her side against her father, but when the winds started turning he turned his back to her and fell back into place to let her be the one to suffer. The dragon comes and blows kryptonite breath of Kara, which forces Mixie to end the chaos. Mixie recognizes that he should have understood the consequences of his actions then and sees that he can still save Supergirl now. Kara tries her hand at a hope speech on her, saying that she doesn't need the crystal, they don't need these weapons, and that they can all be stronger together. And probably what is my favorite, like, villainous response we've maybe ever seen on the show, Nixley just says... Nah. (laughs) It's so good. She's so evil. (laughs) So in the end, Kara nearly is forced to use the Phantom Zone portal, but Mixie says that he's got this and he goes in the crystal, but not before he snaps the bracelet onto her wrist, leaving her powerless. And then she and the crystal are like sucked up into the air. 
So at the tower, they can't find a signal for either Mixie or Nixley, and Kara beats herself up for trying to see the best in Nixley, and Alex tells her that she wasn't wrong to try. It's like to try and reach out to her. And they basically like set out on a mission to save Mixie, since he did them such a solid, and because they believe he really isn't dead in there. In Ireland... In Newfoundland, Florence is showing Lena pictures of her mom and her coven. Lena suggests showing all this to Peggy, but Florence says that to her, they'll always be the reason her parents are dead. Magic is good, but it can't reach everyone, unfortunately. But Lena says she has her mother's gift. And Lena's like, whoa, 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 your little display was like pretty cool. But that doesn't mean I'm a believer. <laughs> I believe there's a scientific explanation for it. I just need to find it. Uh, which is really funny. But then she's like, listen, queen, you've got the power in you. You have the spark. You've got your, you've got the gift. You just got to embrace it. And then that's, that's actually where we leave Lena in this episode. So with Mitch and Nixley, she questions why he saved her. And he says that her powers are beyond impressive and that she's doing things that he thought were beyond the realm of possibility. And he says, you can give me a better life. So it was Mitch who was the one who like snatched Nixley and the orb from the park that day. And now he has the orb. He actually ended up taking it from her, but then she like kind of takes it back and she makes a deal with him. And so now they're partners. Um, And so their final kind of call to action for them is you need to help me find the totem of courage because when you control courage, you control fear. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, sounds like Nightmare in National City, if you ask me. I I can't remember what episode number that was, but it sounds like Nightmare in National City, if you ask me. In the tower, Nia comes up with a dream. Excuse me, she comes up from a dream. She doesn't come up with a dream. She sees a dream. Dreamer, what did you dream? <laughs> she dreamed that she's with Mitch. Nixley is depowered, but with the crystal, and that they're going after the totems. And Kara says, we gotta get her. And this time, no holding back. Ah, go off, Kara. That's gonna be, it's, uh, it's gonna be so good. I'm so excited for Kara to just, like, go batshit crazy. Like, <laughs> you know that meme that's like, aren't you tired of being nice? Don't you just want to go ape shit? Like, that is Kara. That's gonna be Kara for, like, the end of the season. <laughs> When dealing with Nixley, it's like, aren't you tired of being nice? Don't you just want to go ape shit? Like, Kara's gonna go ape shit. <laughs> um, and then, of course, at the end of the episode, we got a promo, which is so exciting. It's so exciting and wonderful that we finally got a promo for Ozzy's episode. It's so wonderful. And she also said on her Instagram story that she was doing 17 interviews uh the other day for the episodes so there's going to be a lot of promotion around this episode a lot of content coming out about uh kelly about ozzy about the episode she wrote about 612s um and it's just going to be really 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 good and the promo looked amazing i mean it featured kelly uh, giving this really heartbreaking speech uh in front of the super friends where she's like people are dying and they look like me and we have to help them and it's gonna be so good and I'm just like I said earlier I'm so excited to see exactly what Ozzy brings to the table and how she interprets each of these characters I'm just really excited to be able to see them all through her lens especially characters like Alex who she loves so much you can just tell that she loves Alex and I mean she loves Kelly beyond you know beyond anything that I could ever imagine she loves Kelly and I love that so much And I'm so excited to see that love on screen. You know what I mean? Like, you can feel it just in her playing Kelly, but in her writing Kelly, it's just, I'm sure that the love is just going to, like, jump off the screen. I'm just so excited. I really could not be more thrilled about it. And I... I'm so happy that the CW did right by her and and paid for a promo. Like, that's the whole reason that they're not doing promos is because you have to pay somebody else to edit the episode into a little promo. And they probably just don't want to put any more money into Supergirl or they don't have the money to put into Supergirl, whatever the case may be. And I'm just really glad that they did the right thing and they gave this episode the promo that it deserved because it would have been so ridiculous if they didn't and it aired right after the episodes that was wonderful um 
I will link to it on, uh, in the, uh, episode notes or in the description, whatever. I'll put it there and you can go watch it. Go show it some love on YouTube. Give it a like. Go comment on it that you're excited for the episode. Show them that people are really excited about this episode and that they did not make a mistake when paying for a promo for this episode. So, I just, I'm really happy that, that that happened and and in the in the promo it wasn't very long but we saw kind of the collapse of the Ormfell. we saw kelly uh we saw john diggle we saw joey we saw lots of rubble we saw kelly in the golden guardian suit we saw kelly in the silver guardian helmet um it's just it looked really good it looked wonderful and there's been some screeners that have gone out so people have seen the episode and people are saying that it might be one of supergirl's best episodes to date and that it's just a really, really beautifully done episode. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see it. I'm so excited. Anyway, I, I couldn't be more excited for it. Be sure, if you're able to, to tune in live to Ozzy's episode, live tweet with the hashtag Supergirl. It would be really wonderful if we could get it trending. You know, I'm sure there's also a fandom trend that's going on next week, probably something to do with Guardian or something like that, but uh, also live tweet with a hashtag on the night of, because that would be just wonderful for Cal- for Ozzy to like log on and and see that, you know, her episode is, is trending and that people are enjoying it and people are watching it. I'm sure that she's probably going to be going through the tag to see what people are thinking. And, and so just like, let her know, show her some love, tag her in a tweet on, you know, after you see it, let her know that she did a wonderful job because I'm sure she's going to, and I'm, I'm so excited for it. And if you can to watch the episode on the CW app the next day, just to kind of show that there's a lot of interest in Guardian, uh, in case they have any plans for any future shows that they're looking to do, or any future characters that they want to bring back, show that there's interest in Guardian. If you watch this episode multiple times on the CW app, it'll help with the ratings, and it'll just, you know, it'll do Guardian a favor (laughs) in the long run. So I'm really excited about that. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I will see you guys next week and that's all. Be sure to do all the things. Rate, like, share, subscribe. Oh, tell me what you thought about this episode of Supergirl. Did you think it jumped the shark? Because I kind of did. Um, did you think it was wonderful? How do you feel about Lena's new direction? She's gonna be a witch. (laughs) She's gonna be Morgana, basically. Um, (laughs) let me know what you think, either in the comments below or you can tweet me at TellOwisePod. Um, You can rate, like, share, subscribe, do all the things, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.